Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the Civivi and Gavco Spiny Dogfish, which is an interesting name. It's also a very interesting knife, especially considering we're looking at a Civivi. Uh, this is just very off the beaten path. For Civivi, um, I am a big fan of Gavco designs. I've reviewed a lot of them. Uh, so it's cool to see uh, collaboration between Civivi and Gavco. And it's really cool, especially considering this uh, is a great design with great materials coming in at a very reasonable price. I'm going to link it right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use my links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Civivi for sending this in for me to take a look at. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. This isn't going to be a long review. It really doesn't require that much. So we're going to kind of speed through things here. Overall length is coming in at about seven and three quarter inches. Blade length is coming in at, wow, three and a half. Great ratios there. And cutting edge is coming in right at three inches thanks to a pretty large forward choil. How about some size comparisons up against the Ontario Wrap Model 1 and the Ontario Wrap Model 2? This is kind of in between. How about up against the Demco 80 20.5? Very, very similar there. How about up against the Spyderco? Para 3, again, very similar size to the Para 3, a little longer. And then finally up against the Benchmade Bug Out, almost exactly the same length as the Bug Out, maybe a hair longer. How's the action? The action is great, and it's very easy to manipulate thanks to this very large opening whole thing. You can get up here and kick it out this way. You can just wheel it out if you're feeling, you know, kind of boring. Or you can kick it out, you know, like a spider co. It's really easy. The action is nice and smooth. There's enough enough weight in the blade um, and when you disengage that uh, lock bar, which is very easy to access. By the way, Civivi, all, all, uh, Civivi always does a great job of that. Um, yeah, it's just, everything's great. I really don't have anything to complain about here. This is, this is awesome. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's about the same. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Where is it? There it is. This isn't going to be a difficult object to carry. It's really about the same length as the Para, almost exactly the same length as the Para 3. Definitely shorter than the PM2. Nowhere near as tall, right? Uh, let's see here. How about uh, materials? We are looking at this sort of, it looks like alligator sculpted G10, right? Or rock sculpted, river sculpted G10, however you want to say that. And then we have, right, this says Gavco. Does it, where does it say the steel? They are so good at hiding this. Well, it's 14C28, and <laughs> I just, it's getting, it's like they kept shrinking it. They've been shrinking it a little bit per knife and they've got it down to the point where you can't even see it. 14C28N. That is arguably one of the most balanced compositions you can get in a budget knife and it is very, very preferred. If you've ever wondered, is that a good steel? Yeah, I'd say 75 or less. I mean, even in some cases, a little bit more, it's still justified. 14C28N is one of the very best compositions you can get at this price point. It is fantastic and I have no issue with it whatsoever. Uh, G10 steel liners, 14C28N. We're coming in with a weight of 3.07 ounces, which is fantastic. Very good ratios. I really doubt anybody's going to have a problem with that. How about a hardware check? I'm going to get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. We have a T8 pivot and we have single T8 screws on either side with a couple of T6 screws for the pocket clip. I have no issues with that. Very simple construction, very easy to take apart. We are good to go. How about the blade stock thickness? We'll go ahead and measure that real quick here. Come on now, zero out. There we go. Bless America. There we go. Uh, 116 thousandths. Not a thick blade. That's about what I expect from Civivi. And wow, did we get... Is that everything? Okay, we're done there. Yeah, this is cool. It's cool because it's different, right? The whole thing is kind of different. A lot of people are going to look at this and be like, that's ugly, right? And that's fine. But look at this compound grind. Dude. That's cool. We're getting a compound grind at under $60. A compound ground 14C28 end blade at under 60 bucks. That's really cool. Slight hollow right here. A little bit thicker out at the tip, right? And we have kind of a reverse tanto. I know blade shape police are going to come after me. Wee, wee, 
no, no, no. You can't call it that because save it. Save it. I imagine my hand in your face, except there's a pie between my hand and your face, right? That's what actually stopped you from talking. I don't care. Um, here is the blade. It looks like this, right? Do with that whatever you will, right? Anyways, I think the blade looks awesome and it also looks cool with this texturing. So Vivi usually is like, should we do a slightly pointed blade or a slightly less pointed blade that's still the overall same kind of shape and then we will uh, we will put a handle on it. And that's fine, they do a good job with that, right? And I'm not saying they should stop doing things like that because it's obviously working, but I've been saying this for a long time. Take some freaking risks. Do something different. I think the Gavco collaboration, and there's been some others. It's not like this is the first time. I think it's a. I think it's great when they do that and work with people like Gavco because we're going to get some different stuff. This is a great example of that. Um, the uh, the. I mean, even though like the the blade and the, it's not like the texturing goes perfectly with a blade or it's only suited for a blade like this. It's just nice that the whole thing is so different, but it still has a knife profile. And man, ergonomically, this thing is great. I love the texturing. Provides a little bit of traction. Not much, a little bit. Truthfully, the lines themselves will lock you in. The pocket clip is that same freaking Loch Ness monster bull crap that they do. So it's going to be grabby. It's going to grab stuff as you walk by and bend out. And then that's just, you're just going to have to deal with that. But um, it's a typical kind of, that's the first thing you feel when you lock in. But the rest of it is so good. I would have preferred some jimping up here, but it's not bad. There's plenty of room to get your index finger in here, choke up on the blade, or don't choke up on it. Get your finger up here behind the nose of the blade and do your draw cuts or whatever, or just hold it like this and cut whatever you like to do. It's fine. Ergonomically, it's great. I think Gavco uh, tends to be like that. They kind of look like prehistoric sea creatures, right? Or sharks. I think they did it. They had like a shark thing. For is is everything Gavco? Does it have to do with the sea? I don't know. I may, I'm just now realizing maybe that's their theme. I don't know. Um, but yeah, and you know the nice thing here is that it's not a tanto. It's one continuous edge, so sharpening really shouldn't be that much of a problem. Uh, I think it's a fairly strong blade shape, given that the flat carries well out here. I think it's going to be, you know, it's not not thin out here, definitely, but it's a little thinner in here. So if you start your cut down here and then slice this way, you should be okay. Blade shape overall, I think, is just awesome. I love stuff like this. I think it just gives knives a little bit more character and personality. Not necessarily, you know, utility that's like specifically definable. Like, are you gaining any specific utility with this blade over their standard flat ground drop point blades that they've got a bajillion of? I don't know. Probably not. But it looks cooler, right? Definitely. You can you can get what you want, right? If you like the simple flat ground stuff, then get that. But this knife has a bit more personality. I think most people will agree whether they enjoy the aesthetic or not. I, I really, really like the blade on this. It's just refreshing to see CBB do something like this. The liners are not nested, but I honestly don't care. They're slightly milled out for weight reduction, which as you saw is, is plenty lightweight. We have a single standoff back here. Absolutely no lanyard hole, which I mean, let's be honest, who cares about that? But something that people do care about is a lefty position for the clip. And once again, we have yet another knife in 2023. It's amazing to me with no lefty position for the clip. What what is happening? Uh, Civivi and any other company, manufacturers, designers, anybody listening, for the love of God, just why it's did it's like they just are like it's 2023. There's left-handed people don't exist anymore. They do. <laughs> Listen, I'm right-handed, right? This knife is plenty easy for me to manipulate with my my left hand, despite it being a right-handed liner lock. I promise you, there are enough left-handed people out there who would enjoy this knife to make it justifiable to mill a slot or just add the freaking screw holes for the clip. Like, why? What? It's not like they're like, nope, we're already over budget. You can't, we can't drill one more hole. Come on. Anyways, in and out of the pocket, pretty easy. Like I said, the texturing here is not super aggressive, so it's not really a big deal. There is a stop pin located in its traditional place with a fair bit of shouldering, so that's nice. This knife does run on bearings. You probably could have guessed that, right? No blade play up, down, left, or right. No lock stick. We are locking up at, I don't know, 50%, 45%, something like that. No lock stick. No pivot lash. Very smooth in here. Nice clicky detent. And it is perfectly centered with no detent lash. 
This knife comes in at 58 bucks. This is a sweet knife. This is cool. I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. If you don't like how it looks or you think it's ugly, then fine. But like, if it, I mean, if, if you like how this looks, like this is a knife that I could pretty much recommend to anybody. Um, I think the blade is plenty functional. It's plenty durable. It's got great materials, great ergonomics. The only thing that sucks is that I can't recommend it to absolutely everybody because left-handed people can't carry it in their preferred pocket. I mean, they could still carry a lot of left-handed people just grit their teeth and buy right-handed knives and carry it in their right-hand pocket, right? But it'd be nice if they could carry it where they wanted to, right? Uh, but uh, outside of that, this is pretty much a recommendable for anybody. I think the price is fair. I, I like the design. I think it's got a lot of character. I really hope that Civivi continues to do stuff like this and work with designers who are, you know, willing to do something a little bit different. It's not like this is the first time we've ever seen this aesthetic, but it is definitely different for Civivi, and I like that. I think Civivi should continue to do what they normally do, but take more risks. Do more things like this because it draws attention to it. It's just interesting. I can't tell you how many knives I've reviewed where they just, they all kind of blend together, right? So it's it's nice to get something a little bit different. This was a very short review. I don't need, I don't think I really need to say anything else. This is going to go on both my recommended knives playlist and my cheap knives I like playlist because it is a budget knife by my definition, which is any knife under $75. Uh, this will get given away on a live stream fairly soon. So if you are new to my channel and you needed a reason to subscribe, I do live streams almost every weekend, either Friday or Saturday. And I usually give a knife away. Um, this will, you know, since it was provided uh, for free by Civivi, I will likely give it away uh, fairly soon on a live stream. So anyways, thanks so much to Civivi for sending this in. Like I said, I'll link it right down below. You guys can check it out. It does come in uh, a bunch of different um, color configurations, right? Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.